Hello again. Um, I know that I explained this in my last video, or I touched upon it. Um, I said that I do a whole video about the anatomy and inner workings of albinism, so I'm going to take the opportunity to do that now. Basically, albinism is a condition where you, um, through a genetic um, inheritance, you both, both your parents have to have it, um, it's a gene that causes your skin, hair, and eyes to have a lack of pigment in them, which is like, if you don't know what pigment is, it's like the color, so like, you know, my hair is white because I don't have any pigment in it, and my skin is very pale because I don't have any pigment in it, um, and my eyes are blue because they have very little pigment in them. Um, so basically, that's how that works. But, um, it goes a little bit beyond the surface in that because, um, if you know anything about albinism, you know that because of the lack of pigment that, um, is in your skin, you cannot tan. Um, so that means that every time that, uh, you spend some time in the sun without any sunburn or protection, you will burn very badly. <laughs> I know. Um, so, um, basically what happens is the sun's rays shine down on your skin, and usually what happens is when you have enough pigment in your skin, um, that, uh, that ultraviolet light will, um, use the melanin, which is, like, um, the chemical for, like, pigment in your skin, and it'll use it to, like, um, basically deepen the pigment. It's, like, weird. I'm not going to explain the whole science because it's, like, really confusing and I don't even completely understand it, but basically it's, like, you, um, the sun's rays come down on your skin. If you don't have any pigment, it burns and it hurts, but if it, if you do have pigment, then it'll, like, make it darker and it won't hurt as much, um, because it's not, like, because some of the melanin is, like, absorbing the energy and turning it into a tan instead of turning it into a burn. Basically. I mean, that's not the full scientific, but like I said, basic, that's just to understand it. Um, uh, my eyes. People um, think that people with albinism have bad eyesight. And you're right. We do have bad eyesight. Yeah. But it's not as... It, it's different for everybody. Um, basically, the things that bother your eyes are light. Let me just address that. Light. Okay. So pretend this is like a cross-sectional view of an eye. Um, so this is, uh, actually wait. Right. Cross-sectional view of an eye. Good. Okay. So this is the part of the eye that's facing out of the head. I can't like point. Okay. Out, out, <laughs> out of the head. So, um, you're looking that way. All right. So this is light. When you have albinism, the pigment in your eye um, is absent. Uh, so when light comes in, it reflects off the retina and then comes right back out. And because the retina looks red, that's why some people have the appearance of having red eyes. But if you do not have albinism, that means you have pigment in your eyes, whether it's a blue, um, a green, or a brown, something like that. That means that the light that comes in is absorbed slightly by the darker pigment. Oh my gosh. Absorbed slightly by the darker pigment and then um, comes back out appearing that color because the light hit that color and rebounded back out. So, yeah. Um, basically, the color of your eye is only um, the color of... only the color that absorbs the light in your eye. It sounds weird, but just think about it. It'll make sense eventually, I hope. Um, also, with albinism, because you, the lack of pigment means that the filtration of light is much less. So we are very sensitive to light. We are photophobic, which basically means that we're not afraid of pictures, which is what I first thought it meant. But it means that you are sensitive to light, um, visually. So that means that when the light comes down from all angles, it won't be absorbed, and instead it'll seem much brighter to uh, than it would for someone who does have pigment that will absorb the, uh, the light better. Um, so basically, um, the absorption of light is worse, and then light seems like it's coming at all angles. Um, so that's why uh, when you see someone with al uh, albinism uh, in the sunlight outside, especially in the summer when it's bright out, they will be wearing dark glasses because the light... Ooh, the sunlight bothers us. I always wear sunglasses when I go outside. So, yeah. Um, what else? Um, the, oh, there are also other um, medical... Um, diagnoses that are attached with albinism. Um, they don't mean that, well, basically, okay. They, you don't have to have them when you have albinism, but
but they are a possibility due to the complications because of the lack of pigmentation. It's all like chemically relevant. I don't want to like explain a chemistry lesson because I feel like that'll put people to sleep. So I'm just going to um, explain like the things that I've heard that have happened to people who have um, diseases that are attached to um, albinism, basically. One of them is a blood disease. Uh, I think it's H something. H, oh, I forget it. It's like, it's really long. Um, but it basically means that your blood doesn't clot very well. And I know that there are a lot of different diseases for that that mean the same thing, basically. But um, it's just because of the way that your blood is different chemically. It doesn't um, have the same uh, plasma, right? Oh my, it's been forever since I've taken bio. It's been like two years, and I've already forgotten most of it. Um, basically, it's like the platelets, the right platelets. The platelets in your blood don't um, stick together very well, so uh, it's easy for um, a cut that heals to burst, um, which means that you'll keep on bleeding, keep on bleeding, and it's bad. Um, or it means that a cut won't really heal that very, um, very well at all. So basically, you have a bleeding problem, and then you have to be put on different medications and eat certain things, and it's a pain. Um, none of the people that I know have had it, but I know it exists, so knowledge. Anyway, the next thing is that I've heard that people have had digestive problems. I don't know how this is tied to albinism, honestly. I don't know how it works, um, so I don't know if it's actually, um, I, I mean, I've heard of people who've had it, but I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, so there you go. Um, but, um, there are also... Um, a lot of, what is it, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, there are also a lot of diseases that you can get um, due to albinism. It's not like, it's not like paired genetically with it, but it's basically because you have albinism, you're more susceptible. So the obvious one is skin cancer. That's why that you will see people with albinism spreading sunblock all over themselves during the summer, especially when we're outside. Well, only when we're outside, but whatever. But um, because it's so that we don't absorb the rays that our body can't, um, absorb, and um, and then if those rays are let into our skin with any sort of protection, it'll basically um, uh, eventually lead to the mutation of the formation of skin cells, which is what causes a tumor or a melanoma, which will cause skin cancer, maybe. So it's basically like a possibility it may not happen, but we're definitely way more susceptible to it because our bodies can't deal with the um, the different UV rays in the air. From the sun, so that's how we deal with it with sunblock. Lots of sunblock. Um, actually, do I have some? Yes, I do. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a whole different video about like the uh, um, products that I use. So I'll save that for another video. Um, yeah, this is strictly medical stuff, as I've uh, said. Um, so I think that about covers it. Um, yeah. If you know of any other um, medically relevant things that are um, associated with albinism or things that you have questions about that are associated with albinism, just any questions in general, as I've said in my past videos, please leave a comment in the uh, not subscription box, the um, comment box below. Please subscribe and um, soon there will be more videos out about different topics and different Q&A videos depending on the questions that I get. All right. I'll see you guys soon.